he has had a 25-year career, and he's helped a lot of companies with designing, implementing, award-winning intranet, social media, and all this in integrated mar marketing. I love that term, integrated marketing. He's worked for many Kansas City's companies, so he can have some insights into what we see in the local marketplace, whether it's Sprint, UMKC, Perceptive Software, InTouch Solutions, Platform Advertising. And he's also been very civically minded. I think this is great. A Vice President of Community Development, an Alderman, Ward 1, and I love this, Acting Mayor of the City of Rockaway Beach, Missouri. So we can ask what he wants to be as an Acting Mayor. He's the co-founder uh, of Ignition 90, and he does really innovative marketing and communication solutions. So we're very lucky to have Sean. Sean. Mike, make sure, there we go, we got it. So thanks for coming this morning. Um, it's nice to see you all. Um, who wants to make some money? Oh yeah, that's the right answer. Um, so let me move this down just a little bit because it's kind of loud. Still hear me okay? Is that all right? Okay. Um, as Eileen said, I've been building WordPress sites for a really long time. I think the first one I launched uh, was back in 2008. Um, I launched my personal blog on WordPress in 2009, and it's still been going uh, to this day. Uh, so I'm at about 10 years, and it earns me pretty good money. And so, you know, as I was thinking through, I don't, I don't know if any of you have sat through and listened to some of my ecosystem conversations or, um, <clears throat> you know, different WordPress presentations that I've done. But as I was talking to Travis about concepts for this, uh, for this WordCamp, I was like, you know what? Nobody really talks about how to make money. A lot of us are WordPress developers, and we make money because we charge our clients to build WordPress sites. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as a revenue model. But so much uh, opportunity is out there for those of us who understand WordPress and value WordPress to make money for ourselves. And part of what we'll talk about in a minute is um, what I call mailbox money. Who wants mailbox money? You just go to the mailbox, there's the check, and it's all good, right? So just a little bit about me, three things. Just super passionate about digital marketing. Like I could talk about this stuff like all day, every day. Ask my wife. I talk about it all day, every day. Um, I do dress up. That was at work. HR didn't like the blaster. But they told me you should always dress for, you know, for the job you want. So I came to work and dressed for the job I wanted. Uh, I do, actually, so uh, I'm pretty uh, engaged in cosplay. It's something I do with my kids, because as they were growing up, I was like, you know what? This is something we can do together. So we build costumes together, and then we go to Comic-Con. So um, again, building WordPress sites since 2009. So uh, in fact, I figured it out. Anybody here 23 or younger? Ha, huh. I have a domain older than you. <laughs> I do, I figured that out. I, the first domain I registered is Actually, older, it's, you know, old. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to call you out. But, um, so I've been doing this for a while. So what I'm going to do is talk through methodologies for making money using WordPress. Okay, there's really the way I see it, there's four different methodologies. But before we do that, just as we ha just had a lawyer who had to do the, the legal ease, I'm a non-practicing lawyer as well, so I have to do kind of legal ease as well. But my legal ease is a little different. It's this. There's no one-size-fits-all with WordPress. That's the best thing about WordPress. And there's no one-size-fits-all with um, make, you know, creating a business that earns revenue. You have to figure out what's right for you. And there's no such thing as internet in the kit. You guys have seen those infomercials where you can buy a website and a kit. Um, and it'll tell you how to do everything and you'll be making millions in a year. It doesn't exist. Blog posts that say, here's how I made my first 100,000 page views in the first three months. They're all crap. They're not all crap, but for the most part, they're crap because they're specific to that individual person. And I've read a lot of them. Um, I just went through a nine month Pinterest experiment to see if I could make Pinterest work for a technology blog. Nine months I spent on it, and it 
the answer is no. It doesn't work very well. If you're a crafter, if you're a, a travel blog, if you do recipes, if you're a DIYer and you beautiful pictures, that stuff, Pinterest is amazing. But for a tech blog where you're showing pictures of Google Analytics, it doesn't work. Not good, right? It's not that it doesn't work. It just doesn't work very well. So, um, so what you have to do is find what's right for you. So I'm going to talk you through all this stuff today. And what I kind of hope to do, this is kind of gross, but I kind of want to plant a bug in your brain so that when you're mowing the lawn, you know, or you're taking a shower, or you're doing those things where your brain's kind of off, that bug starts going, you can make some money, here's an idea, and you start thinking about how you can do that. Fair? Okay, cool. All right. So no quick and easy. Quality will determine success. And we're gonna talk about quality in each of these four types of business making processes and the, the role that quality plays. Because it's easy just to say, everything has to be high quality. But in some business models, it doesn't necessarily. Ask Alibaba. You guys know who Alibaba is? They sell crap from China, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Ask wish.com or the Wish app. It's just, I mean, you know, it's lower quality stuff, right? But they sell it on a high volume and they make a ton of money. Right? So quality, it's easy to, for everybody to say high quality. It all has to be high quality. It doesn't necessarily all have to be high quality. Um, patience and commitment are critical. So if you've ever been in one of my presentations, I've probably asked you this question before. If you haven't, anybody know how long it takes for a blog post to rank appropriately in Google SERPs? I got three months. I don't care, established or, or not established. Th I heard three months. 24 to 48 hours? Okay. So I have to, I have to make sure that, that you guys heard my statement appropriately. To, so how long does it take for a, a blog post to rank appropriately in the Google search, in search engine results pages, SERPs? The answer is 18 months to two years. Okay, now, the, the responses that I got were how long can you, does it take for you to get in your, your post into Google? And the answer is, yeah, absolutely. It can take anywhere from three hours to three weeks, depending on whether it's a new post or, or a, a, new, a new blog or an established blog, right? But Google will keep tuning and tweaking your blog post for 18 to 24 months before it finally figures out this is the spot it should be at. So what it'll do is as new blog posts come in that are on the same topic, it will rank yours first and you'll see a weird bump in traffic. And then it'll be like, no, that's not, not right. So we're gonna put that other one first and then you see a drop in traffic and you're like, Wah. So 18 to 24 months. Patience and commitment are critical. If you are starting a business, starting a blog, trying to make money, you need to be looking at a two year business model. I have lots and lots of friends and family who started their blogs and they watch me make money on mine and they're like, I want to make money. And then three months in, they're like, I'm not making any money. I'm like, yeah, I know. And you stopped writing as well. So, all right. So we're going to start <laughs> with the cart before the horse. Okay. I know people say not to do that. Don't put the cart before the horse. It works for this guy. <laughs> it's going to work for us. Okay. And the reason is I want to walk you through the ecosystem conversation briefly. There's a whole big presentation about this, but I need you to understand it before we get into the WordPress piece, okay? So before you do anything, you got to know your customer. You got to know who's, who's, who's going to buy your stuff or who's going to consume your content. You got to think through that because if you're writing blog posts that are like, hey, today I went outside and mowed the lawn and blah, 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 that's not money making, right? What you need to think about is who are the people that I'm going to serve? So, as an example, I have a new project that I'm starting up. It's called Esports for Parents. It's a niche blog. My son is an aspiring professional gamer, and like a real aspiring, aspiring professional esports gamer. Like he wants to go get a full ride scholarship to college on esports and then play esports professionally. Everybody know what esports is? It's gaming, <laughs> right? But he's, he has logged about 2,300 hours on his game of choice. So he's serious about it, right? So there, you know, we talk to parents at all these tournaments that we go to, and they don't know anything about scholarships. And is my son just playing games? Or 
is my daughter wasting her life, all that kind of stuff. So there's a niche out there, a content niche, where I can write content for parents who are trying to figure out what the heck esports are, what's online gaming, what's a Dota, what's Fortnite, right? So there's a great opportunity. I know, I knew before I ever started, I just launched the blog like three days ago, I knew who my target audience was, fair? Then we gotta think about how are they gonna find my content? So I sat down with my wife, who is not a technologist, is not interested in digital marketing, and I asked her, give me 25 questions in all this exercise that we've gone through learning about esports, give me 25 questions that you wish you would have had the answer to. And so she did. 25 blog posts, just like that. Topics that I can write about, that I know the answer to because we went through the journey together, right? So, gotta think about, what is she searching for? I need something, I need answers. Can my kid actually go and get a full ride scholarship to a college playing esports? Ooh, there's no content there. I'm gonna make it, okay? So you gotta think about that, and then we gotta build our strategy. How many blog posts do I need? How long do they need to be? How are these people gonna find them? What are the keywords I'm gonna use? How can I get links from other sites that are credible? All those kinds of things that we talked about from an SEO perspective. And then we start building our ecosystem. You can't have a conversation with me and not have the word ecosystem come up sometime in the conversation. The idea here is, at the center of everything we're gonna do, we're gonna create a bunch of content, we're gonna make it web friendly, and we're gonna make it accessible via mobile. And what CMS are we gonna use to do that? WordPress. <laughs> That's the whole point, right? We're gonna use WordPress to do it. It's a great, great CMS to be able to do that. And then, we're gonna figure out how do we distribute our content. We're going to share it to our Facebook page, we're gonna add it to our Twitter feed, we're gonna buy some paid media ads on Facebook or Pinterest or LinkedIn, wherever, to be able to drive traffic in while we're waiting for organic search to work, right? So we start building this little mini ecosystem. <clears throat> we are going to ask everyone who comes to, uh, to the site to give some value so they can get some value. So I might ask them, hey, download my PDF of 15 steps you need to think through before applying for an eSports college scholarship. Give me your email address and I'll give you the PDF. Value exchange, right? But I get their email address, they get the answer to the solution that they were looking for. We capture that, we store it in a database, CRM, e-marketing tool, whatever you wanna call it, and then we talk to them. Well, first of all, we create addition, like a lot of the times, I get on my personal blog, probably half of my blog posts are created now by people who ask me questions via my contact form. I'm like, hey, that's a great question, here's the answer, and I'm gonna know route a blog post for that, because one person was searching for it on my blog, hey, there's probably 100 people who are looking for that. So we're gonna create content based on the feedback that we get, right? And then finally, we're just gonna email them and re-engage them and remarket to them, and this is oversimplified, super, in fact, it's so oversimplified that, oh, I'm, I'm, Sorry, we're going to review our analytics and eval evaluate and adapt, right? But this is what one of those ecosystems looks like when we really build it out, right? And now, if, now if I'd started with this, your guys' eyes would roll back in your head and you'd be like, bah, I'm done. But do you get this? It's not rocket science, it's pretty simple, right? Pretty straightforward. This just has a, a lot more steps to it a lot more detail to it. But it's basically an ecosystem. And my point in telling you this is, you can create a WordPress-based business all day, every day. In fact, you can go to SiteGround and create an account and use their WordPress you know, generator that creates a WordPress instance, and you can use the 2019 theme, and you can write a blog post, and you can do that all in two hours. Seriously, like you can do it in two hours. You can have a business up and running in two hours but it's not gonna do anything unless you know how to promote it, share it, evolve, adapt, analyze, and then eventually have the patience to let it do its thing. Cool? That's the ecosystem conversation. Everybody get the ecosystem piece and why it's important? Okay, so that's the cart. Now let's talk a little bit about the horse, all right? So, 
you know, I keep working with WordPress because WordPress keeps working with me. It's a great CMS. I, uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but my, I wrote a car, I used to do a lot of social media cartoons because I worked in, I was building a social media team for an agency and I would go and I would talk to clients and they would say things to me like, turn off the tweeter board. Turn off the tweeter board. One, how do I turn off Twitter? And two, why are you calling it the tweeter board? Right, so I would create these, co these social media comics of all the things that I ever heard. Now, I never said who they were, who said them, but all these kind of, well, one of them was I worked at an agency that was a .NET shop. We're a .NET shop. That means they had a, a team of .NET developers and everything had to be .NET. And so I came to my boss, who was the VP of technology, and I said, hey, our client, who's a big pharma client, has asked us to create a blog for them. I can do it in like, Five days, we can have it busted out, up and running and going. And he said, but we're a .NET shop. I said we could do it on WordPress. He's like, but we're a .NET shop. And so th there's a funny case of the $200,000 blog. So he went through and had their team go through and estimate it, and their estimate was gonna cost $200,000 and it was gonna be six weeks to roll out. That's, that was my response, <laughs> like what? <laughs> so I went back to my desk on a Friday afternoon and I built it um, in WordPress. So, the, you know, so I used to write these, these comics and they were based on these kind of experiences. So anyway, so back to the quality work. So if you are building a business, you better have quality on your mind before you ever start building your WordPress blog, site, whatever business because the level of quality you put in is going to drive your profitability, your revenue, your operational expense, and, and your revenue targets, okay? Profitability, that's what everybody wants. That's the mailbox money that you get to keep, right? Revenue is the check that you got. OPEX in the middle is how much did it cost you to get there, clear? So revenue minus your OPEX equals your profitability and your quality is going to directly impact your profitability, okay? So these are the four types of business we're gonna talk about, I kind of call them packs. So we've got physical items, and some of these you're gonna be like, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Physical items, selling access to things, selling content, and then selling services, okay? We're gonna talk through each one of these. I, uh, just so you know, I am at the opposite end of the spectrum from Ben this morning. Ben believes that presentation shouldn't have bullets and presentation shouldn't have the, or he heard that they shouldn't have you know, lots of words and things like that. I, I used to do presentations where all it was was a pretty picture up here so that you guys would just listen to me. And then people afterward would ask me, hey, could I have your presentation? And I was like, sure, but it's not gonna mean anything to you because all it is is a bunch of slides with pretty pictures on it. And I'm a big, I'm not a knowledge hoarder. I love to give knowledge away. So I put the bullets. I, the way that I lay this out is I, I want you to read it like a blog. And to be honest, I will turn this into a blog on my site, you know, so that it can make me some money. Because <laughs> that's what we're here for, right? So, so that's why. And, and I'm not going to sit and read this stuff to you, but we're going to talk through it. And, and I, by the way, I encourage you, at, stop and ask questions. At, if any point you have questions, don't have to wait till the end. So let's talk through selling physical items because it's the easiest one, kind of. So the problem with selling physical items is this. Where do you put them? Now, if they're small, cool. If you're selling thumb drives, great, thumb drives. But like I have a client who sells artificial plants and trees, high quality artificial plants and trees. She does not have enough room in her basement to put this stuff and she doesn't have enough <clears throat> revenue to be able to afford a warehouse. So she went through a process where basically she created a drop, drop shipping method, uh, 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 relationships. So, so drop shipping, in case you don't know, this is the way it works. Someone comes to her website, orders a really pretty plant or flower or shrub. That email, once it's ordered, they pay for it on her site and she collects the, the dollars. And then that email goes to her dropship supplier. And the dropship supplier puts the thing in the box, strap tapes the box shut, puts her label on it, and sends it to the customer. She never has to touch it. And then she pays the dropshipping company for the item. So say it's a $50 plant, 
she has to pay the dropshipping company $40. So her margin is thin, right? Dropshipping sounds awesome, except until you realize how thin the margin is. And so she works with us because we work very carefully in her margins to do paid media ads. So imagine, so she sells very high quality artificial trees and plants. She's not competing against Hobby Lobby. She's not competing against Walmart. You know, she's, she's selling to um, Disney Studios for the, for the new set of one of their shows. So that's the high quality she's selling. So we have to super target all of her paid media ads to that, because if we have to compete with Walmart and Hobby Lobby and that kind of stuff, and they chew up our budget, her margin's gone, right? So bless you. The, so the other you know, flip side to this is that you've got warehousing partners, Amazon.com. Great warehousing partner, except <laughs> there's problems with Amazon.com from warehousing partner too, or Smart Warehouse out in Olathe, or Olathe Gardner, um, a warehousing partner. So we have a, a client who they have redesigned the crutch. So if you think about what a crutch looks like in your head, that crutch that I guarantee you all are picturing was designed in the Civil War. Well, a husband and wife who worked at Hallmark and were product designers redesigned the crutch so that it doesn't do this. And if you guys ever had crutches, crutches hurt your wrist and hurt your underarms. And theirs, their crutch rests like this and all the pressure's here, right? Well, they sell them, but they don't have enough room in the crossroads, or West Bottom, sorry, to be able to store all these crutches. So they have a, warehouse, a warehousing partner. Order comes in. Email goes to the warehousing partner, warehousing partner sends it out, kind of like the drop shipper, right? And they just pay a monthly rent for the space, okay? And then you have in-house distribution, and that's where you have them all and hold them all. We have a, a, a client that basically they make concrete chips that are the color of a colored concrete. So if you order 30 of them, they have them in a big warehouse at their plant and they just send them out, right? So you have to decide if you're gonna sell products the selling of it isn't the hardest part. You can create your catalog, make it so, you know, use WooCommerce, make it so people click through, they uh, add the thing to the card, they click checkout, they go through your Stripe um, payment portal and they pay, and now you have to figure out how do I get this thing to them, right? So here are some of the pros and cons. I know, it's terrible. I promise you I'm gonna give you guys this, this uh, um, presentation. So, so they're good for high revenue margins, or, or sorry, high mar you can get good revenue for high margin products, right? So if, if you know that your margin is good, you can get good revenue out of them. If your margin is low, the cost you're gonna spend in fulfilling the thing that most people don't like to think about could hurt your business really badly. It could make your profit margin almost turn to zero or negative and nobody likes a negative business. That's called a hobby, right? It, trust me, the IRS will tell you that. Yeah, the IRS will say, you haven't earned um, a profit and paid taxes for three years. Now it's a hobby. <laughs> um, uh, three or five, yeah, sorry, I, it, it, yeah. Um, so it's a proven business model. E-commerce works, we know it does, right? E-commerce works for a lot of people. So it's not like something sketchy or gamey. Um, when it's automated, it can work really well. The only reason, so when our, our, our artificial trees and plants lady came to us, she had 300 items in her catalog and the her biggest problem was every night she had to go check her drop shipper, in stock or out of stock, in stock or out of stock, in stock or out of stock, in stock or out of stock. She didn't have time in the day. She was just 300 items was all she could do. So we automated that and now she has 3,200 items in her product catalog because we automated it, right? So if you automate it, it can give you a smoothly, a smoothly operating business and can help you control your margin. Um, customer service though, if you're selling stuff, so it happens a lot. A lot of businesses, a lot of people build these businesses and they're like, holy cow, all these people keep bothering me. They keep asking me questions. They keep emailing me, they keep calling me. Why do they do that? How do I, why am I living in customer service hell? Well, because you opened a business, right? And you're selling stuff and they're expecting quality and maybe they didn't get the quality that you said it was gonna be. So you better be ready for it. If you're selling products, customer service is an important part of it. There's a way to outsource it. 
But guess what? Operational expense cuts into your margin. So you've got to think through that, okay? Um, the, there are options for those warehousing that we talked about, right? There's different options to think about. Um, the biggest con that we've found is, especially for startups, competing with, if, you, if you've got a niche product that's new and, and, and unique, great. But if you're competing with big warehouses, they have ad budgets that can outspend you in a heartbeat. And Google loves it. I mean, think about the search engine result pages now for Google. First five are ads now. Your first piece of organic content is now pushed below the images, which is below the ads. Who is Google playing to? Walmart. You know, overstock.com. Questions on the physical items? Okay, pretty straightforward. Access. Oh, sorry. Uh, so these are things you need. If you're, if you're going to set up a business doing physical items, right, you need Word, WordPress, WooCommerce. You have to have a fulfillment process, some sort, whether that's drop shipping or warehousing or doing it out of your basement. That's okay, too. Got to have a credit card processing, Stripe, or Braintree. Don't go with anybody else. Seriously. Stripe. Braintree is owned by PayPal, so that's PayPal. Braintree is PayPal. So Stripe or Braintree. We've done like three other um, e-commerce processors, and they're all a hot mess. Stripe or Braintree. <laughs> um, Yoast. If you're not using it for SEO, it, it, just use it. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It has its challenges every once in a while, but and then Yoast for e-commerce. What Yoast for e-commerce is the plugin that it's a premium plugin, but it gives you the schema that you need so that Google recognizes that you sell products. And then you can start using doing things like star reviews, stuff like that in, in Google products. Okay? So uh, Yoast for e-commerce. If you skip this. In any business that you're running, you are asking for problems. And I don't care whether it's WordFence or iModules makes one. You better have a firewall installed on your WordPress implementation, even a personal blog. Okay? Your host will tell you they'll take care of it, and that's good level one. But you're responsible for level two, which is having a firewall plugin. That's going to stop the nasty people from getting into your site especially running e-commerce, okay? Um, and your email, email marketing piece. Got I don't care if you use MailChimp. MailChimp's changing their stuff, and it's getting all gamey, but start with MailChimp. It's free for the first, like, 1,000 subscribers, I think, and then you can figure out if you need to move off to Constant Contact or somebody, somebody else that you're going to pay for once you start making money off these folks, right? Okay? Those are the minimum. So quality. Talked about Alibaba. So low quality drives high profitability, right? So Alibaba can do that because they sell in volume. So if you're going to sell in volume, if you're going to figure out a way to sell in volume, you can get away with lower quality. If you're not going to sell in volume, if you're going to sell artificial plants and you don't want to compete with Walmart or Hobby Lobby, then you better have high quality. And you better stand behind it, and you better have a good return policy, and you better have darn good customer support. Okay? Physical. <clears throat> 500 hours you should be spending to do physical. 500 hours you should be spending to build your business. You got to build your, 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 your uh, source for your products. How are you getting them? You got to configure your site and your catalog. You got to test your payment gateway over and over and make sure it's working. You got to promote all of your stuff via social media and paid advertising. And then you got to remarket, 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 remarket. Return customers are going to be really important physical. That's where you should be spending your first 500 hours. Access. Concerts. Events. Okay, you're not actually selling a thing. You're not going to, other than maybe a ticket. Coming here. You bought a ticket, right? Access. You're able to come and do this thing. So <clears throat> selling access, you know, concert tickets, ebooks, online courses, webinars, all those kinds of things. Right? It's a good business model. Pros and cons, it's really high rev or high margin if you so imagine creating an e-course telling people how do you create and make make money um, creating a business through uh, WordPress. You can create that e-course. 
and people will buy it, as long as it's good quality, over and over and over and over and over. You made it once, and maybe you update it every year, but you can make money over and over and over, right? And I'm not gonna go through all of the pros and cons because we, we're, we've got time constraints, but I'm gonna give these to you so you'll have them. <clears throat> so things you need for this. You definitely need WordPress. If you're gonna charge, obviously you wanna make money. You need WooCommerce, right? Um, events management or download manager plugins. So uh, Foo Events, we use Foo Events for a client that runs a, a big conference like this. And that's how they sell the tickets and get the money for the tickets. And the nice thing is Foo Events has, has uh, great add-ons that will send this beautiful e-ticket to them and make it QR or barcode. So it gives them everything that they need to be able to do that. Um, download manager is if you are selling an ebook, you want somebody to be able to pay to be able to get your ebook. You know, you can publish it on Amazon, but they'll take their cut, right? Or you can just promote it yourself, sell it using WP Download Manager <clears throat> and their e-commerce piece, and be able to make your money there. You need your credit card processing. That's brain triggers, right? <laughs> you need Yoast. You need Yoast for for e-commerce, firewall, and your email, email marketing tool. Quality. You can't go short on quality on this one. I, how many people have bought an ebook because it sounded great and then it turned out to be crap? And then you only paid $2.99 for it, so you're like, well, okay, I guess I'm out $2.99. You know how many times that happens? That person's making money off $2.99 off crap. <clears throat> if you create a really good ebook, a really good webinar, a really good online course, not only will people buy it, people will talk about it and they will share it. So if you guys are thinking about creating, and we'll talk about content-based businesses here in just a second, if, so I'm gonna give this ahead, but if you're thinking about content-based businesses, there's a YouTube channel called Income School. Now I have no relationship with Income School. I'm not an affiliate of Income School. I just love these guys because they give away their content for free and they tell people how to create good websites that make money. They're nice guys. They're funny. They have Taco Tuesday and they literally will go buy three Taco Bell tacos and sit on a bench in a park and answer questions from people. <laughs> it's cool. Like it's really, really nice, right? It's a good, it's a good channel. So they make great content, high quality content. So what did I just do? I told you guys about it. Right? That's what's important when you're talking about selling access. If everybody walks away from <clears throat> WordCamp and is like, that was a waste of time, which they won't, I promise. I've been doing this for a while. This, this is one of, the, one of my favorite places to come uh, for, for like tech conferences. Everybody will talk about how great it was and more people will come. I've watched this thing like grow up more and more and more and more people. It's awesome. So focus on your content. Things you need to be focusing on. Building your products, right? What is it you're going to do? Is it going to be a, a, an online course? Is it going to be an ebook? Um, you got to basically have a curriculum if you're going to be selling online courses. Like it can't just be one and done. People want to come back and take the next course and the next course and the next course. And the good thing about that is, you get to make money off of that. If they keep coming back, you need to have more content for them. Test your payment gateway. Promote via social. Cultivate remarketing over and over and over again. Ecosystem, right? It's a big circular loop. That's your first 500 hours. Okay. This is my favorite content. So I, you know, I mean mentioned, I, I own an agency. I build number one and number two, the physical and the access for clients. And then for my agency, the last one we'll talk about is services. I sell services. I generate leads, right? And then I build WordPress sites or I help them with their digital marketing or their business strategy. That's the services piece. But this one I do on my own. Like I said, I've been blogging since 2009. I've been blogging about social media since 2010. So I'm gonna, like, I'm really lucky because I started blogging about social media when social, nobody knew what social media was. So I'm lucky because my blog has domain, age, and authority. Whereas if somebody tried to start a blog about social media right now, it's such a crowded space, it would be really hard to crack the SERPs, to be able to get your, your content in. So I'm lucky 
I've been doing this for a long time, and I didn't monetize it until last year. So I've been writing content. I was like, kind of like, I don't want to monetize my content because it's just my content, right? And then one of the guys from income school said, you should try this. Um, you know, I was watching one of their videos. And if you're not monetizing your content, here's what you should do. You should try this. So I did. And I made crazy amount of money off of it. And I'm like, now I'm being stupid. I can't not make the money off of this content that's been out there for 10 years. So I do. And so I'm telling you guys kind of how to do that, right? And, and, and if you're patient and you're diligent, every single one of you can make, I sound like Tony Robbins, sorry. <laughs> and you, and you, and you can make a whole bunch of money. No, I mean, if, it takes a long time. It takes hard work. But if you're willing to create, this is not up here. So you might want to, 40 blog posts, two to 3,000 words of high quality content broken into segments with H1, H2, and H3 headers. If you're willing to do that, and they're highly targeted to a very specific niche, you'll make money. You will, okay. So these are the things you need, We're, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this in just a second, but <clears throat> WordPress, Yoast for SEO. If you're, oh, this is what kills me. I'm uh, my ad provider is a company called Mediavine. If you go to my blog, so it's mitchon.com, um, you'll see ads, and they're from a company called Mediavine. Mediavine has a private Facebook group, and that private Facebook group is only people who, who publish ads, bloggers who, who do Mediavine ads. And they are so many moms making six figures in that group by busting out the Betty Crocker recipe book creating, following the recipe, changing it to be their own. So instead of chocolate chip or chocolate in it, they're using maple syrup or doing something. And then they're creating these long blog posts with a recipe, that's why this recipe plugin is at the bottom. This recipe, uh, how, who here has searched for a recipe on the web? Yeah, right, right. These women are making, and there's some guys too, but it really is mostly women are making mad cash doing this. Seriously, and when I say six figures, I mean six figures. They're all sharing, hey, we went to Iceland this month on our Mediavine check. Seriously, so if you can figure out a way to make that happen, you gotta have the right plugins for it, because if you think about your recipe, it's really annoying. You gotta go through the whole story of where the recipe came from, and how it was there, and then you get through 19 pictures, and then finally you get to the freaking recipe at the bottom of the thing, right? Which is all you wanted, and then the page refreshes, and you're like, ah, I gotta go through it all again, right? There's a, there's a method to that madness, because the longer they can keep you on the page and the more ads they can get you to look at, they'll give you the value at the end, but now you've given them the value for putting it together, okay? So you gotta have a recipe plugin, something like that, that helps you contain that. Um, you can do it on your own, but it's a little more difficult. It's good for DIYs, too. There's DIY plugins that help people go through the steps at the bottom, and Google loves that because then you get your answer at the top of the Google results of here's the steps to do something, and like click more to read the rest of the steps, right? Mediavine is the ad, uh, the, um, ad provider that I use, yeah. Uh, here's the challenge with Mediavine, is you have to have 20,000 page views a month in order to be able to qualify for their program, okay? But there are others that you don't have to, and if you want, want other recommendations, I, I just tell you right now, AdSense sucks. AdSense is terrible. So, in this world, it's all about RPM. Revenue per thousand, RPM, okay? The number of page impressions that you're showing, so if I have 20,000 page impressions, I have 20 Ms, right? AdSense pays somewhere in the $3 RPM. Three times 20 is $60. Well tracking? Mediavine, when I switch, so, so the guys at income school were like, if you're, the video is, if you're using AdSense, you're a sucker. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so I'll flip over to Mediavine. So I flipped over to Mediavine, and immediately, within a month, was at a $15 RPM. That's a 5x increase in revenue overnight. And you have to qualify for it, right? And, but there are other providers who will get you somewhere in the $7 to $8 for your content. This is a content economy. Everybody's heard those words, right, a content economy. Do you know what that really means? 
It means if you can get smart ideas and experiences out of your head and into Google, you can make money off of it. For real. Okay? The content economy is about the content that's in your head. And Google wants it. If you're willing to take the time to get it out of your head and put it into a format that Google and other people understand, you can make money from it. Okay? Um, so first 500 hours, this is all about writing content. 40 blog posts. 40 blog posts. All right. Last one is lead gen, and this is services. And I'm, I want to kind of rush through this last one to get to something else that I want to show you. So lead gen is all about how do I get people to call me or fill out my contact form so that I can provide them services. This is where my clients call me and say, Sean, my WordPress site sucks. Literally had a client who said, I have a six-page WordPress site. I paid an agency $50,000 to create it. I've asked, them, yeah, who was right? I asked them to add one page to it and they quoted me $5,000. You know that, like when the cartoons, like, <laughs> like that's how I felt. Like that, this, this poor lady got ripped off, ripped off hard, and she didn't even know it. And then I tell her how much, and how much, you know, I can have your page up in a few days and it's gonna cost you X, and she's like, <laughs> now, like, so that I sold somebody this earlier. Like, she paid an arm and a leg, now I'm charging her a toenail, like the little toenail, and now she's like, this sounds like not real. I'm like, well, I can charge you for the arm, but I shouldn't have to, right? That's just ripping you off some more. I hear that all the time. So this is how we, we work, we use our website. My, Ignition 90, our whole purpose is to, to make things happen in 90 days at a time. So we might build you a website in 90 days, we might build you a, a, a social media, um, a strategy and implement it in 90 days. We might build you a CRM tool or an email marketing plan in 90 days. 90 days, 90 days, 90 days, 90 days. Ignition 90. Our site is a one-page WordPress site. Because that's all we need. It's all word of mouth and people who are like, can you help us? So you don't have to work that hard at it as long as you're providing high quality. This is, this is a quality one too because word of mouth is critical. I want to give us time for questions. So, but before I do that, I want to. Oh, okay. It's on my laptop, and I didn't. I didn't realize we were going to be using this. But um, I have an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, uh, basically, for this new, I told you I was doing a new blog called Esports for Parents, and the idea is dr bring in traffic, organic traffic, right? And then I'm going to have MediaVine be my ad publisher. So it's the same thing. And I went through and, and I did a model over two years to say. Quarter by quarter, if I increase my page views by X amount, quarter by quarter, I will share this with you all. So I'll make sure that Travis or whoever puts it up with, with my presentation. But what I did was I started at 10 page views a day. Who here can create a blog that gets 10 page views a day? Your mom can come visit, your brother can come visit, you can, you can create a Facebook group, whatever. You can get 10, 10 page views a day, okay? And what it does is it goes quarter by quarter and it says, on a monthly basis, if I can do a 10% or a 15% increase in my page views, how will that work out over two years? And the answer is, that for me, a Q3, so now we're, not, you, know, um, you know, basically nine months in, right? That's the point at which I can qualify for Mediavine, okay? If we keep increasing, if I'm continuing to share via social, I'm creating great content, I'm sharing that content, I might be doing a little remar remarketing to my email list, right? I'm working hard at it, just like it's a business. And I get down here to the end of Q4 at year two. Do you know how much money I'm making every month in Mediavine? $2,800. $2,800 in mailbox money. 40 blog posts, two to 3,000 words. Like I know what the, you know, I've been doing this a long time. I know what the formula is. Now, will it work perfectly? No. Will it be $2,000 a month? Maybe. It'd be close to that. 
could it be $3,500? If it's a great niche, yes. It's real money, peeps. Real, real money. Yeah. <clears throat> no right answer because it all depends on the niche, right? So, but, but I would say, I, I never publish a blog post that doesn't have four to five, you know, good um, uh, on target pictures, photos. I like to embed YouTube videos because they're, they're good for folks too. And I love video, but video is very time consuming. And in my model, I don't spend the time on video. I, I just, it's not worth my time for the revenue that I'll get. I know that for a fact, just from my experiences. It's a great question though. And by the way, Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S, Pexels, Unsplash, yeah, Pixabay, free photos. These are royalty free, licensed, you, can, you don't have to pay for them. You thank the person, say thank you, you know, sometimes leave them a tip or something. Give them credit if you can but tons of photos out there. Just continues to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. I, like for my eSports one, I got all my eSports stuff off Pexels and Unsplash. And because there, there are people out there taking the photographs. What other questions? This is, so just last thing. Just, you have, to, you have to work at it. You're gonna get tired. Six months in, you're gonna be like, I'm not qualified for revenue yet, this sucks. Um, that's a great question. The question is, is it like the number of blogs at a time? How, you know, how, how so fast? If you put out yeah. 40 blogs in 10 days, if you yeah. really work your butt off, uh -huh. put out 40 blogs in 40 days, is that going to scale really fast? Or are you going to slow the one down? Or what are you trying to do? It's a hard question to answer. The question is, if I dump all 40 blog posts out right now, or if I do 40 over, you know, one a week over time, which is better? And my answer to you is, pump them all out at once. And the reason is because the sooner you have that out there, the sooner Google's gonna start hammering at them trying to figure out where you fit in the SERPs, the faster you're gonna get to your 18 months or two years where you're really right in there. And remember, that's 40, 40 blog posts that are performing really well. So you better make sure they're high quality. You better make sure that you've thought through the keywords. You're not keyword stuffing. Penguin, panda, hummingbird, if you don't know what those mean, those are bad, bad things that happen to your blog. Google hammers you out because you're keyword stuffing and you're, doing, you're trying to game the algorithm. Don't do that. Write for normal people. Write the way that, that you speak. Okay? What other questions? Did that answer that? I'd say put them out. I can get them out there as fast. That's what I'm going to try and do with eSports for parents. What other questions? I'm all hyped up on coffee. Sorry. <laughs> Is that helpful? This is the first time I've ever done this presentation on business, so I hope that was helpful. Again, I'm gonna give you this. I will give you that spreadsheet just so you can kind of look at it. You'll see it, all the formulas are in there. It's not rocket science. You can look at it and you can be like, holy crap, if I did do 40 blog posts and they did increase 10% month over month or 15% in some of them because I'm, I'm gonna put some paid media or, or I'm gonna email people about them, could I use two grand in my pocket every month? from now until eternity? Is it a question or just a, okay. So do you ever still think that blogs are just still good to do because they're still really good on getting money out of it? Yeah. No, I really, really do believe that this, so there, there was this resurgence. So the question was, are, is, are blogs still really a thing? Are they gonna be good? Can you still make money off them? The answer is absolutely. Because Google still wants content and there's still niches to be explored. Esports e for parents is an unexplored niche because it hasn't existed in the past, right? Social media, if you're writing a blog on social media, you're not gonna make much money because the, the Chris Brogans, they're gonna, you know, the, all the, the, those folks are just gonna push you down in the ranks, the Neil Patels. What else? Yeah. Uh, uh, that's, so it's a good question. Who sends you the check? <laughs> How do you get paid with content? So Mediavine sends you the check. So when, if you go to my blog, you'll look at a blog post and you will see in, my, in, in, in between my paragraphs, there's ads. And those ads are highly targeted to your, yeah, I'm, we're, we're running out of time. So to your um, browsing. So I might get an ad that's all tech-based. You might get an ad on what you're interested in, right? And then at the, at the end of the month, Mediavine will send me a check for those ads. Good question. 
All right, lunchtime. I don't want to keep you from lunch. I am here. I'll be around all day. I'll be hanging out in the WordPress help room. So if you got questions, come ask them. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it.